Extermination. What's going on, everybody? My name is Favored, and this is my guide to Winter Todd. On the screen currently, you're going to see a table of contents that's going to have all the timestamps of everything that we're going to talk about in this video. So if there's something you want to jump ahead to, please feel free to do so. So let's get into it. First off, let's talk about what Winter Todd is. For those of you who don't know, it is a mini-game styled boss. Instead of using combat to kill the boss, you use your skilling. The main skill being fire making, but also including farming, fletching, and construction. The only skill requirement to start Winter Todd is 50 fire making. Alright, now let's get into the items that you're going to need to be able to complete this. The first thing you're going to need is 4 pieces of warm clothing. I'm going to go more in detail and show you a list here in just a moment of those pieces that will qualify as warm clothing. You're also going to need food. For high level accounts, we recommend Sarah Bruce, and then cakes or wines for lower level accounts. Especially for Iron Men, I would recommend getting a cake grind going, get some of those cakes, and then coming to do this. You're also going to need an axe that's going to be steel or better. Realistically, anything above steel does not truthfully matter. It doesn't do anything extra, so anything above steel will be sufficient. Really, you don't want to use anything below steel, because in order to have the 50 fire making requirement, you're going to be able to wield at least a steel axe. And Ironman can buy this from Bob in Lumbridge. You're also going to need a tinderbox, a knife, and a hammer. The knife here is really optional, as is the hammer, but it's I would definitely recommend keeping those both with you as you go through this. Um, you can also obtain these. As soon as you walk into the game, there will be crates, and you can take these from the crates. The only axe that it offers is a bronze axe, which will make getting your roots just really slow. So it's not recommended that you do that. Alright, so before we get into methods and ways of actually killing the boss, I do want to show you all a list of all the items that are considered warm items. Again, you're only going to need four of these items in order to do this boss. And of course you won't have the pyromancer outfit until you get in and you start doing this. So just keep that in mind. But you can buy things like the Santa hat really cheap on the auction house. You know, you also, if you have a fire cape, of course, bring that. Just a fire staff. So many different things that you can use. And even some holiday events that will count as well. Especially with Easter just passing, if you just got the bunny outfit, then all of those equipment will work for you as well. But the easiest, if you have none of these, being just to get that clue hunter outfit. I'll link in the description below a method to go and get those pretty fast. Now let's talk about how we get there. The first option and easiest option is the game's necklace. You take the game's necklace right to the winter top teleport, it'll put you right there. Another option is if you've paid the 80,000 GP, you can use the fairy ring code CIS. And lastly, the other option that you do have is running all the way from Port Serum, which on the screen you'll have seen a map that'll show you about the direction you need to go. It'll take you about to the fairy rings, and then also if you're going from the fairy rings, this will also show you how to run up in there and be able to get to the boss. Alright, now let's get into some methods of actually taking this boss down. So as you're going to see here, in the top left corner is the HUD that you are going to see when you are inside of Winter Todd. There are four icons that you really need to pay attention to. The first one being the one that looks like some unlit logs. Now this means that the brazier has been unlit and that it just needs to be relit. Anybody can do this. There's no requirements to do this. You just literally have to click on it. It'll relight it and it'll also give you 25 points. The next icon shows you that the brazier is already lit. Really, when this is happening, that means that you can contribute the, the roots or the kindling to it to continue to get points. If you add the root without fletching it, you're given 10 points per root that you put in. If you are fletching them and putting them into the brazier, that gives you 25 points per. During some matches, you will have the brazier get damaged and it will need to be repaired. Repairing it does award 25 points. Now you just want to be careful, and I'll show you all a method to making sure you don't get damaged when the brazier gets damaged. Last but not least, when the pyromancer is down, you are going to see a red hat icon appear. 
in whatever direction it is that you are. When this happens, you just need a rejuvenation potion in your inventory, which is used from getting a concoction from the crate and then picking one of the herbs on either the east or west side of the map. Once you use this on the Pyromancer when he is down, it's a very quick and easy 30 points. So I always recommend having this potion in your inventory because you could just be throwing points out the window. Alrighty, so once you get here, what my recommendation is is that you get 10 of whatever food it is that you are using. So in this case for me, I'm using Cerebrews. You can also grab a tinderbox, a hammer, and a knife. Um, if you don't have these things, you can get them once you enter the door. So once you're ready, just go ahead and enter the door. And then as you get in, you're going to see the energy. So this game is just about to start all the unlit braziers. And then as you'll see, they all got lit. And now everybody's running to go ahead and cut them. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to wait till this game's over, and then I'm going to start fresh on the next game with you all. But what I would recommend doing here is go ahead and grab that concoction and hold it in your inventory. If you're in a game that's part of the way through and you, you're not going to get your points, I'd go ahead and run. You run here to the, I always go to the west side, but there is one of these on the east side as well. Go ahead and grab one of these herbs, and then I'm just going to run back to the safe zone. So tell you everything that you really need to know once you get past this point right here and you're in this like general lobby area you're not going to take any damage from the cold so as you'll see all these people that are getting hit for sixes and threes and eights this is all the cold that's just hitting them and this is random it can happen one or two times in a game it can happen seven or eight times in a game i would say on average it's probably closer to the seven or eight um, some games it feels like you're getting hit constantly. Um, I know that some people come up here to Fletch as well, but we're going to talk more about that here in just a couple minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and wait and then fast forward to when we get to where the next game's starting, and then I will walk through everything I do in the game with you all. All right, so we're now at the point where the game's about to start in about 30 seconds. So whenever game ends, there's an intermission that's normally like, let's say, 45 seconds to about a minute and a half. So I went ahead, got the potion made, so I have in my inventory 10 Cerebrews, a tinderbox, a hammer, and my rejuvenation potion. So I'm going to go ahead and take a quick sip of my brew. That way it's got me above where it needs to be. And then as soon as the timer goes up, go ahead and click on the brazier and light it. It gives you your first 25 points. And then run over here and start to chop the bruma roots. So while we're chopping this, you have two options after you get the roots. Either you can fletch them or just throw them in as they are in the roots. So for this first time, I'm not going to fletch them and then I'll fletch them the second time. Also important to note that when you get hit by the cold, it interrupts what you're doing unless you're chopping these roots. So as you'll see, I took damage, but I never stopped chopping. So now I'm going to slowly start putting them in the brazier. And what I like to do here, if you're using rune light right here where it says feeding, when you get hit, it'll turn to idle like that. And you see I'm no longer throwing them in, so I just have to re-click on it. Now, also, when you get hit, it's a good idea, like if you're wanting to heal up, to go ahead and drink and then click on it again, just to save the game tick. So you just continue to throw these in. We're getting 10 points per root that we throw in. So now on this second inventory, I'm going to go run back up here and just start chopping again. And then I'm going to fletch these. And as you'll see, I just got hit again, but I did not stop chopping. So we'll give it just a second here while it goes ahead and it'll get us another inventory. As you'll see, this guy's fletching right here. Don't fletch. You can fletch right here on the wall because it can't drop the the aerial damage. But sometimes you'll see people that will fletch like right here. And this can do damage to everybody that's standing right by the brazier. So I recommend fletching right here in this section because the aerial effect can't come down and hit you. And if we see an aerial effect, I'll show you what that looks like. So as you fletch these, it takes a few seconds. But as you'll see here, it's this also a point counter. It's saying if I deposit everything in my inventory right now, I'm going to get 275 points. If I keep fletching, I'm going to get to 350. 
you see there I clicked on the brazier a little bit late I still got my points and experience for lighting it so sometimes the animation won't go through anytime so right here also if you look that damages I could almost killed that guy and then you want to repair it you'll get your points and then when you light it again I should get an XP drop looks like I was too slow so just keep fletching these and then you'll get a full inventory you deposit them at the same speed but again look I get hit and then there goes the I have to start fletching again so now I'm going to deposit all these and these kindlings and as you see my points I'm getting them a lot faster now the only problem with fletching over just throwing in the roots is that it's actually less fire making experience and the whole goal of this really is just getting fire making experience lagged a little bit there so if you see here the pyromancer's down so I'm gonna click on him because I have that potion he gets brought back up and then I light the brazier if I would not have brought him up and the brazier goes down like that, you can't actually relight the brazier until the pyromancer is back up. So just take note of that as well. And I'm going to go through each section, each section, sorry, and show you all a little bit more detail on everything that happens here. But I just wanted to show you a full playthrough of the game. So a big question a lot of people have is, to, should you fletch or should you not fletch? I personally, when I'm here, if I'm AFKing, I might fletch because I need those points to get to 500 to get my supply crate, which we'll talk about supply crates in just a second. But if you need to get to 500, that's a good idea to go ahead and do that. Um, but again, if you're not AFKing and you're just here for the experience, I highly recommend just doing the fire making. So if you all just saw in the XP drop as well, you get good XP for depositing it, and then you also get whatever your level is times that by 100. So I'm at 92. So I got 9.2 thousand experience because I went ahead and finished the game, got my 500 points. So it's always crucial to get your 500 points because it really gives you that big XP drop. Okay guys, the first thing I want to show you all today is when the brazier gets broken. So this is a clip just from when I was doing a random game and the brazier broke. So the first thing I'm going to go ahead and play, if you see the snow falling over the brazier. After the snow falls in the brazier, the brazier breaks. In this case, I did not step away in time. Don't know what I was doing, just wasn't paying enough attention. And as you'll see, anybody in the area, nobody stepped away so we all took damage all you have to be away is one square in this for this not to hit you okay guys the next clip I'm going to show you is just when the brazier becomes unlit when the fire gets extinguished from it so I'm going to go ahead and play this clip and as you'll see there's just a little bit of snowfall the brazier gets unlit you have to re-click it again I failed here didn't click it in time oh actually I did I did click it in time as you'll see I got the XP drop so just keep that in mind look out for that when it goes down you can get right back into it and then you can get your experience and your 25 points for that as well okay guys what I'm going to show you here is a clip of when that 3x3 three three square gets put up and it's going to affect everybody in the area so I'm gonna go ahead and hit play and as you'll see the snow is falling here I stepped out of the way because I have originally thought it was a brazier but if you see in that 3x3 three three square it hit everybody that's why it's so important not to fletch right there where that person was fletching um, because that will cause damage to everybody and you're pretty much just killing everybody and nobody's going to like you and you're really just going to get trolled for it. So just be careful there. When that 3x3 three three squares up, comes up, just get out of the way. Okay, let's talk about some of the experience rates that you're going to give from Winter Todd. So um, the experience you get for doing things like fixing the brazier cutting a broom a root, fletching the root, lighting the brazier, all of that stuff is really dependent on your current levels. So what I mean by that is if you fix a broken brazier, you get four times your construction level, um, provided that you already have a player-owned house. And all this information is coming right from the OSRS wiki. So when you cut the root, you get 0.3 times your woodcutting level. When you are fletching a root, you get 0.6 of your fletching level. 
and so on. So the big ones, you know, we're here for fire making mainly. We're not here. This is not a good experience rate for wood cutting or for fletching. So I want to focus more on the ones that give you the fire making experience. So it's always important if you're standing at the brazier to always light it because you get six times whatever your fire making level is and experience. So what does that mean? That means like, for instance, I have 92 fire making at the time of making this video. So every time that I light that brazier, I get 552 experience. So take your level, times it by six, every time you light it, that's the experience you get. So really you should be lighting it in the beginning of every match. There's no reason to go and start wood cutting right away. It is more ideal for you to do lighting the brazier and then go to cut. The other big, big drop that you get here is when you are subduing the boss, right? When the game's over, as long as you have 500 points, you're going to get 100 times your fire making level. So whether you have 500 points or 600 points, this is going to be the same exact XP drop. So some of you might be wondering, kind of, what does this look like per hour as well? So this is the wiki's chart on the experience you're going to get per hour. Um, this is with no fletching, and they, they consider this high concentration. So at 92, if I'm not fletching, I'm getting about 300 to 315k an hour. So every level that you have really does count, and it, it increases it. Um, really, it takes about 600 plus games. Um, they say on here it takes 670 about 670 with to achieve 99 fire making using the kindling so that's based on you getting 800 points per kill this is really give or take it's not gonna not everybody's gonna take 670 it's gonna take some 630 some 645 really it's all dependent on how you play and how efficient you are in the boss all right, so now let's talk about the most important part, which is the loot process and what this looks like. So for every 500 points that you get in a game, you get one supply crate. Now, if you get over 1,000 points in a game, this does not mean that you get two supply crates. What it means is that you get higher chances towards the loot table. So you only get one crate, but you get more loot out of the crate, if that makes sense. So on the wiki here, it says, for example, 750 points would guarantee two rewards plus a 50% chance at getting a third reward. So just gives you a higher chance of getting other things. So some of the really noticeable drops or this unique drop table you're going to have is going to be the Bruma Torch. It is untradeable. It ex it's an inextinguishable light source that you can hold in your weapon slot. The Pyromancer outfit, the warm gloves... Those are all pieces of warm clothing that you can use later. Really, what I did is I opened all my crates until I got my Pyromancer outfit, and then I'm saving the rest of my crates until I hit 99. The reason that I did this is I did not get 99 in one go, and your rewards that you get from these crates are actually based on your other skills. So I've leveled my farming up. I've leveled my mining up just so I could get better rewards from these crates. The two biggest things on this drop table is going to be one, which is the Tome of Fire, which is tradable. The Tome of Fire, once you put burnt pages in it, it gives you the ability to have endless fire runes, as well as 50% increased damage on fire spells when it's equipped. So it's a great thing to have. And then, of course, what every person in RuneScape goes after is the pet. Uh, the pet is really rare. It's a 1 in 5,000. So it's saying that you would have to literally have so much experience before you're even getting the pet. Um, and really, you shouldn't get the tome before 99. But of course, some people go dry for 200 mil experience, and then others get it at level 60. So it just depends on where your luck and RNG lands there. Also, very important to note is that if you have extra sets of the Pyromancer outfit, you can trade them to Insignia outside of the mini game or the boss, I mean, I'm sorry. So outside of the boss, you can trade these pieces, and it gives you an extra supply crate that will have chance at five rolls. So recommendation is whatever you do with your pieces, when you have multiple pieces, just trade those in for extra supply crates. It equals more money 
it's also going to equal, you know, better chances of getting the pet or the rare drop of the tome. So the other thing I did totally forget to mention just a second ago is the dragon axe drop that's also on the loot table. And it's a 1 in 10,000 chance. So there is a big item, tradable item there as well that can be used for good GP. Guys, thank you so much for staying through and watching to the end of this video. It is truly appreciated. Um, I'm still new into the content creation, so I know there's some parts of this video that are probably a little bit rough, so thanks for bearing with me. I am so up for all constructive criticism, so anything you have in the comments, please leave for me. Uh, things that I can do to get better, because this is something I'm passionate about and want to continue to do. Um, I will be getting 99 fire making sometime this week, probably at the end of the weekend, honestly. So I'm going to be doing a video at the end of the week, and then I'm going to do a giveaway as of whatever the profit was when I open all these crates finally. When I open all of them, I'm going to have a profit number, and then I'm going to give away a portion of that. So stay tuned for that. In order to be in that drawing, you have to give a like and you know, be subscribed to the channel as well. And let me know again what I could have done better and how you liked this video. Thank you all for your time.